What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryant and I am the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. As your finances continue to evolve, which is the whole point of this whole journey, that's the whole point of this channel, it's the whole point of everything you do in life is to progress and eventually evolve. And as you continue to do so, your mindset around money is going to change in certain aspects. And in today's video, I'm going to cover a very, very valuable topic. And I'm also going to disclose some of my mistakes that I've made, especially the biggest one when it came to saving money. So I'm sure we've all heard the saying, it's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep, right? And that is correct. But unfortunately, that doesn't always go into detail in terms of how much money you should keep and where the money you keep should go. Some people keep their money under a mattress or in a shoebox. I literally used to do that. Some people keep their money in their bank accounts or in high yield savings accounts. And, and this is what I'm getting at. There's a ton of places where you can put your money in, but how do you know you're putting it in the right place? And at what point is keeping your money hurting you? I'll be covering all that in this video. So just to get into like a quick story for you so you fully understand what I'm conveying in this video. When I was younger, like we'll say between 22 and 23, I was kind of in survival mode when it came to my job. I didn't really feel secure. I didn't really feel confident in what I was doing. And as a result, I kind of ran home and just learned all these different tactics. And the main one that I used was saving money because I felt like, well, this is gonna at least be my safe haven if anything fails like if i lose my job if the plant shuts down at least i'm going to have my savings and then i gained a lot of confidence when i saved up my first twenty thousand dollars nobody could tell me anything it was game over as far as i was concerned and then i was telling my mentor i was like yeah the next i'm going to save forty thousand i'm going to save eighty thousand and, and he, he just stopped me he was like you know you're doing good you're doing good but you have to understand you're not going to become wealthy like you will never be wealthy if you're just saving money. Keep in mind, first job, only been working like a year, maybe a year and a half at the time. So my pay hadn't changed. So I didn't really know what he meant at first. But now that I reflect on that, what I understand is that he was in a completely different financial situation than I was in those few years ago. I was like, you know, I'm saving up for my emergency funds, you know, and I'm saving up another cushion so I don't have to dig into my emergency fund. It's like a fail safe before I even get to my emergency fund. And I, and I just kept saying to myself, you know, it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. And I was making good money back then, but I was so focused on keeping as much money as possible after a few months of realizing that I was spending money needlessly on food and things that I really didn't need. And when I say things I didn't really need, fast food didn't need that. Shoes didn't need that. Entertainment, stuff like that, didn't need that. So I read articles, I saw videos that all preach the same thing. It's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you keep. And it got pretty much to me like a broken record and I was like, screw it, I'm just, I'm saving up everything. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not buying nothing pretty much. And that to me, thinking back, maybe that wasn't the best approach. My mentor saw that as, you know, I know he's doing what he's supposed to do and he's, you know, doing what he learned and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, is this effective and is this gonna have a big impact on his life if he's constantly penny pinching everything? And he really didn't go into a ton of detail, but he just made it very clear that you're never gonna be wealthy if you're just saving money. And, and now just, this, just think about it. Who do you know retired off of just saving money? Let's say you had 50 grand in the bank right now and you saved 50 grand every single year. How many years would it take for that to become a million? Well, it would take 20 years. Okay, so let's say you retire off that. How long is that $1 million gonna last you? It's probably not gonna last you 20 years because inflation is definitely a thing and it's definitely way more than 4%. It's way more than 7% right now. So who's to say it's gonna get any better by the time you hit retirement age? And it might, but we, we don't know. That's very uncertain. That's years and years down the line. That money that I was saving wasn't accumulating interest in the bank account or anything like that and absolutely none of it was working for me except you, you know the 0.01 percent that my bank was gaining for me but you see what i'm saying and at your point in life right now you might be to the point where you're only focused on saving money and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that 
you might be at a point in your journey where you're like, do I prioritize saving money or getting out of debt? Like you're not even thinking beyond that and thinking about the investing piece of it. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's exactly the point of life that I was at at that time. And there's a time and place for every part of your financial journey that you're on right now. But the biggest mistake of saving money that you should avoid is to only worry about saving and only save just to save and get to the point where you really, really cut yourself short and you really, really don't spend money on anything. And you're just so tight on money. Like I want y'all to enjoy yourselves. I want y'all to budget and understand how much money you can spend guilt-free on yourself and on your family or whoever every single month while also putting money to the side without having to think about it. That's not something I feel that we should have to think about. We have so much things on our minds, so much things on our plates in life that we should not have to sit and think about, oh, I gotta save this, oh, I can't buy this, it's, it's $20, I don't know about, like, what kind of way of life is that? And that's me speaking from my financial situation right now. Back then, I wouldn't have been speaking like that. Back then, I would've been like, yeah, put that back down, you know, uh -uh, we ain't spending money on that today. But the reason I can say it confidently from where I am now is because I know exactly how much money I was making back then and how much money I had left over at the end of the month back then. And I knew how low the cost of living was back then. And I could have enjoyed myself a lot more and still put away a sizable amount without having to think about it. And I even could have had more money because of it, because what I could have done was automated it in a few different ways. And this is when you get to the point where you understand when you can stop or when you can slow down when it comes to saving money. Because at a certain point, the inflation is gonna hurt you so bad that the money that you have saved isn't gonna do as much for you than if you had it somewhere else. I had 20 grand in my savings and I had like a few thousand in my checking and another few thousand in my other savings. Like I just felt like I was balling out of control. And once you feel comfortable that way, you can get to a point where, okay, I'm gonna dial it back a little bit. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. At that time, $20,000 was like four months worth of savings for me. Like at that point, like I was pretty chill. I was pretty much kicking back. Like, I mean, we're talking about a single 22, 23 year old living alone, not that much overhead at all. Even though I did live in a neighborhood where I could have definitely gotten a much cheaper place to live, but that's another story for another day. But for the most part, I was chilling, I was doing good, didn't have much overhead. There was no car payment, still isn't a car payment. You get what I'm saying? Like, I put myself in a position to not have a ton of overhead from the start. So right then, I should have thought more critically and said, you know, where else can I put my money where it is guaranteed? And the key word right here is guaranteed to grow. And some people say that nothing in life is guaranteed. I disagree, highly, I highly disagree. I think there's several things in life that are guaranteed. But if you wanna have that conversation, we can have that conversation on a different video. But where can I put my money where I know it's gonna grow faster than the pace of inflation? Now, to some degree, I did follow the advice that I'm talking about today. It was just in the wrong direction. So once I got to that point, I was like, cool, I'm good. I started going to like a bunch of seminars. I started going to a bunch of masterminds. The masterminds were free. The seminars were about 300 or so bucks, not to mention hotel rooms and things of that nature. And I learned a lot, but absolutely none of it put money into my pockets. I spent money on books, which some of it did put money in my pocket, but not a lot of it, at least not the books that I was reading at that time. I spent money. I invested my money, $600 a month into something that I did not understand. Now, of course, at first, I would have just kept that $600 and put it in my savings account, and that would have been all good and dandy. And to be fair, on paper, financially, that would have been the smarter thing to do is to put the $600 into my savings account and just keep letting it grow. And that's $600 on top of what I was already saving. You get what I'm saying? I worked a ton of overtime because I had to and the money stacked up pretty quick. But that $600 a month did not earn me a single dollar, a single dollar. And I did this for like 12 months. And before you insult my intelligence or try to say that I'm crazy for doing this, like I, I, I truly believed in what I was putting the $600 in. It was an MLM. I'm not gonna get into any specifics about that, but it was an MLM. 
because I don't want to put them on blast. But I spent a lot of money on that, and there was nothing wrong or nothing unethical about the MLM itself. It's just that business model did not work for me, and it did not put money into my pockets. And to be frank, I'm glad it didn't work out because what if it did and then COVID hit? That would have wiped out everything because if you know anything about MLMs, you definitely have to be up in front of people. People have to have money to purchase from you and things like that. Like it was just all around not going to work for for the year of 2020. But anyway, we're talking back in like 2017, 2018, before any of this stuff happened. That was what I spent my money on. So like I learned that lesson. So the first lesson I learned was you can't just save every single dollar and expect it to grow. You have to make your money work for you somehow, some way. And there's several ways to do it. The way that I was introduced to was to increase your income and create passive streams of income through an MLM, which did not work for me. Doesn't? Am I saying it doesn't work? That's not what I'm saying. It works for plenty of people. It just doesn't work for people like me. God built me for something different than that. You get what I'm saying? And that's fine. But that's the second lesson. The second lesson is, I was like, okay, I need to invest my money and, and I need to make this money work for me. And I also need to put the work in as well and create passive income streams. And I was hoping, at the time, I was hoping to get just like $400 a month passively. That never happened. And I didn't realize it then, but there's actually plenty of ways to build passive income streams without spending a dime. You could literally make a YouTube video right now and put in the work and then boom, your, your channel gets monetized. You can make hundreds, thousands of dollars if you want to through YouTube. But back then, I didn't know about all that stuff, so I was just really getting my feet wet. But that was the second thing uh, you shouldn't invest. That was the second thing I learned. You shouldn't invest in things that you don't fully understand how they work and how it can bring more income into your life and how exactly it's going to do that. Because if you go on just hope and expecting that you'll get rich just based off of somebody you know, hyping something up, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just if somebody hypes something up, you have to be willing to do your own research. It's just like if I hype up something to you, I would expect you to do your own research instead of just, Reggie said this, so I'm just going to go buy it. Like, no, like I think with anything, with anybody you listen to, I don't care how experienced they are. I don't care if it's Dave Ramsey. I don't care if it's Robert Kiyosaki, myself, which I'm definitely neither one of them. I'm definitely not on their, I'm definitely not on their level. But what I can say is, I think critically about my own finances and I've heard advice that they've given out that I have disagreed with. I can't say just because millions of people follow these guys and because they have cult-like followings that that means that I should just give in to whatever they say. Like I have to think critically about my own finances. I think you should do the same. And uh, within this $600 investment a month thing, I did not think critically enough about it. And as a result, I was in the whole $600 every month, but that taught me very valuable lessons. So the lesson of this video is if I would have put $600 a month into say VOO, just VOO alone, VOO, if you don't know what that is, it's Vanguard's ETF that matches the S&P 500. That's what it is. Vanguard's S&P 500 ETF tracks the S&P 500. Back then it was at like a super, super low price. Today it's in the 300s. But anyway, I'll put the chart on the screen. But um, if I would have invested then, like back in like 2017, 2018, and just kept on investing that $600 in there, oh man, the money would have grown. And that's just one example. I'm not going to give you every single example. I don't want to overwhelm you because there's a lot to investing. And I think those need to be taken in small increments. And if you ever want investing video, just ask for it. But every time I create one, I get like two views on them. I'm like, you know what? That's pretty, uh, that's pretty discouraging. So, um, but now nah, if you ask for it, I will definitely put more investing videos out there. But I just want to speak to this, like saving is good. Getting out of debt is good. And you should prioritize both of them at the same time. But savings is going to be more important than getting out of debt because what could happen is you could get out of debt, right? Just to say that, oh, I'm debt free, especially if we're talking about student loans. If we're talking about credit cards, get out of debt right now. But if we're talking about like student loans that have small interest rates, unlike credit cards, which have very big interest rates. If you're talking about student loans, you can take your time on that. They give you 10 years. Why would you rush to get it paid off in like two? I did that. So I know the reason why I rushed to get it paid off in two. My reason was I just wanted to be able to flex and say I was debt free, but also the narrative behind student loans was that it's like a weight on your shoulders. And it really wasn't, but I felt like it was. So what I do, 
I threw so much money at my debt as well. So this is obviously a step beyond when I was obsessed with savings. Then I got obsessed with, with debt and I got obsessed with investing in things I didn't understand. And I just overall, I was on the right track and I was, you know, doing responsible things to the best of my knowledge. But I was moving in the wrong direction. And once I took a step back and dialed everything in, I was like, no, I need to put more money into my savings instead of into my debt. And then I got to some some savings milestones. And then once I got there, I was like, you know, when it comes to investing, I need to I need to invest more so I can make my money grow. I want passive income because everybody swore up and down that the MLM that I was going into was more beneficial and more lucrative than the stock market. Which, by the way, that is not true. I have proof, but I'm not going to I'm not going to go there today. But um, six hundred dollars into VOO for a month. Let's say VOO goes up like 4% in that time frame or even 2%. It's obviously not going to be a lot, right? But if you have $600 over the course of 12 months going into VOO or VTI, which is another ETF, then that money would have grown like crazy. And then if I would have messed around and done it consistently over the years and increased from $600 to say $1,000, $1,200, $2,000, almost at 12,000. I definitely didn't have 12,000 back then. But anyway, that right there would have turned into some serious money because 600 times 12, that would have been 7,200 invested. You get about an average 10% on VOO per year. That would have been nasty. Even if it would have stayed the same $7,200 per year for like four years. Oh, that would have been nasty. And let's say you didn't want to go that route. You don't know what the heck VOO is. You don't care to know what VOO is. Okay, well, I could have put the extra $600 into my retirement account at work, a.k.a. my 401k, and it would have grown even more. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't have been able to retire off of 20k, but I can definitely retire off my 401k. You get what I'm saying? And you can too. So it's just about understanding where you're at in your financial journey. Uh, You might not feel like you're ready to invest because it does require some research if you want to do the level of uh, investing that I'm talking about in this video. And saving money is important. And I think saving money is fundamental. You need to understand when to break away from certain types of saving because with everything you do, you're going to have to save money to some degree. So for example, so for example, your saving account is the most baseline type of savings there is when it comes to saving money, obviously. Then you have stuff like a high yield savings account, which you might put something like, say, your emergency fund inside of. But then there's everything else. Let's say you want to buy yourself a nice TV. If you're responsible, you save up for it. You don't just like swipe a card, like a credit card, for example, with money that you don't have and then buy it. Like, no, you're going to save up for it, boom, and then you buy it. Now, if you have the money for it and you have a credit card, it's smart to swipe it because then you get the TV plus you get the credit card points for it and then you pay it off immediately. You don't pay interest on it. And then with those points, you can actually buy things of monetary value. See, that makes sense. But that's just an example, though. That's saving money for a TV. If you need to go get gas, especially nowadays, it's going to be more expensive. You need to make sure you actually have that money in your card. So that you don't go into the negatives when you actually use your card to get gas, food, clothes, pretty much everything in life you have to save your money for. And so when you get to a point where you want to invest, you have to be disciplined enough to have the same principles behind your saving. Okay, I'm saving $500 a month. I'm investing $200 a month. Boom. And you can set up automations within your bank account to automatically send these amounts so you don't have to think about it, which, by the way, I made a video about that. It's called How to Double Your Savings. But you have to be disciplined and have that foresight up front to go ahead and make those decisions. And then, you know, if you have debt, okay, I'm going to save this much. I'm going to put this much in my debt. Saving $800, I'm putting $400 to my debt. Stuff like that, you know, evening evening things out and then understanding your priorities. Okay, I have credit card debt. Let me put most of my money in my credit card and then still put a little bit of money in my savings just so I have a little bit of cushion going for myself. Okay, my my finances are looking straight. Okay, let me go heavier into investing now. So instead of putting $1,000 into my saving and $750 into investing, let me swap them. Let me put $1,000 into investing and $750 into my savings. You get what I'm saying? You You can do stuff like that. You can make those types of calls when you understand what it is that you need and what you want and what your goals are financially. But that's why it's a big mistake if you just focus on saving, saving, saving all the time. And I've been more than guilty of this up until like the age of, I think, what, 24 or 25. Might have even been up to 25, which is just two short years ago. 
and I've been investing that entire time, but like I didn't really get serious, serious about investing until just a few years ago. But that's just me accepting and owning what I could have done better in the past. And that's going to help someone else after me get better with how they do their finances and for their future and for their families. And so when it comes down to it, the most responsible thing you can do is understand you can learn about index funds and things of that nature and understand how you can beat people whose careers it is to invest in stocks just by investing in index funds or ETFs. And ETFs stand for exchange traded fund, just so you know. You can just put your money in there and make a lazy fund. It's called a lazy fund because it's just one thing, but it has like 500 things inside of it. And then you just, you just keep throwing money at it little by little, month by month, being very consistent with it and also saving money. But if you would have put, let's say I would have put $7,200 into my savings account every year, right? It would have just been lateral, 7200 plus 7200 Yeah, I would have got the little 0.01% that the bank account gave me. whoop de do. You know what I'm saying? You can keep your little $10. I'm talking about if you put that $7,200 per year in VOO or just in the stock market and you've done your research and you, you're going to get good returns and things of that nature, then it's going to be way more than something lateral. It's gonna, what it's going to do is it's going to multiply. And my mentor didn't break that stuff down to me. And at the time, I think he was gen genuinely just talking about increasing your income and, you know, not specifically thinking about the stock market, but he was 100% right. How are you going to retire off of just saving? And before I let you go, I just want to say this for those of y'all who are interested in these types of things. I, I went more than just the stock. I did more than just the stock market. Like, I wanted to create more income, but I also want, I also had a passion for video and adding value to people's lives. So I created a YouTube channel that's bringing in some more money, wrote a book that's bringing in some more money. You get what I'm saying? And it's adding value to the people and it's giving sound, solid advice that if you follow it, you will be looking good by the time it's time for retirement. I'm talking millionaire status, well above millionaire status at that. I break down how you can get a six figure job. I break down the skills and the assets that you need in order to get there. I walk you through the whole journey, my journey. Also talk through the hardships, the ups and the downs. It's not all peachy. And if you're wanting to build wealth, I'm telling you, that's exactly what you can expect to be up against within the content of the book. Also tell you the best advice that I could possibly give you regarding those specific situations. And that right there is value that will last a lifetime. So that book is making me money around the clock. So those are other things you can invest your money in. Cause like the, right in the book, for the most part was free, but like when you consider the book cover, the editor and things of that nature, like things, they costed a little bit of money. It didn't cost a ton of money, you know, for me to invest in my book, but it still costed money up front, but it's going to pay dividends for the rest of my life. Not to mention the fact that there's other books coming, not to mention the fact that the hardcover and the audio book are yet to be released, but they will be released very soon. And so one book, there's an ebook, there's a paperback, and then there's a hardcover and an audible coming, right? So that's four streams of income with one book right there. Do you have to do that? Not necessarily. I'm just opening your mind to different ways you can make multiple streams of income. So if the stock market isn't your jam, which if it isn't, I highly recommend you you, you definitely give that some more thought and you look into it because the stock market, I absolutely love the stock market and it is one of my favorite things. Like genuinely, I have a lot of fun just researching and looking at where I should be putting my money into and you really don't have to do that much research. If you just find one good index fund or two good index funds and you balance them out, like, I mean... You don't even have to look at it. You can be like, yeah, five, I'm going to send $500 over there every month or $1,000 every month. And it just automatically goes in the fund and, and you're, you're done. And then you just look back at it every now and then you see it grow. Sometimes it'll be flat. Sometimes it might even be down. But at the end, in the long run, according to that chart I showed you earlier, it's going up. And that is how people retire. And I know a lot of people get skeptical about investing in the stock market. And I used to be extremely skeptical. But if you look in your 401k, what do you think your 401k is invested in? It's in the stock market. It's in the bond market too. If you actually take the time to open up your 401k and research the funds, and then you look at, you look up on Google, like what holdings are within those funds, you're going to find a lot of the stuff that I talk about in my videos. You know, Apple, Microsoft, Adobe, Oracle, United Health, PayPal, stuff like that. I'm starting to get into a rabbit hole now, but you see what I'm saying though, like do your research on that. But let's say it's not your gem. There's other ways to create more income. Your way might be investing in another skill set, like an online course that teaches you how to code. 
boom, now you know how to code, that's value. Now you can take that and make more money. Is the $400 that the course costed going to, you know, instantaneously increase your income? No, you're gonna learn the skill and then you're going to be able to add value to other people and then your income is gonna go up. But my point is, that's a good way to use your money, especially if your savings are already looking good. Am I saying that if you have zero savings to go ahead and start investing your money? No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I didn't do that. <laughs> your boy sure didn't do that. I made sure my savings were good first. I made sure I was knocking down my debt little by little. I was making sure, okay, do I have enough money? And I was being super meticulous about it, but I was like, I do have enough money, so I'm gonna invest it in this. And even though I invested in something that I didn't understand, now I understand why that was a mistake and why I should very meticulously look into what I'm investing in. And that's how I've become such a much better investor today by making those mistakes. So all in all, that was the biggest mistake that I made when it came to saving money. And that's what I would highly recommend you guys to avoid going forward because saving money is great, but there does come a point in time where it does hurt you to the point where the inflation is just so high that it's like, okay, you saved this money and it took you five years to save it. but if you had to use it, you'd probably burn through it in two and a half years. And that right there is just not good. So anyway, let me know your thoughts in the description. And if you haven't already, check out my book. If you wanna know more information about investing and things of that nature and how to get your finances really, really, really on point, leave a like, hit the subscribe button, and just know I'm working on something special for you guys. So if you wanna set up a call and tell me what you would want from an online course, Definitely do so in the link in the description and in the comments. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.